everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Rini and I love sharing DIY home decor projects here on my channel. So today I'm so excited because we are going to be doing some IKEA hacks. I love IKEA and I cannot wait to share the DIYs with you guys. Before I get started, please subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell icon if you would like to get notified every time I post a new video on my channel. So without further ado, let's hop right into the DIYs. For the first hack, we are going to use this IKEA heat trivets. They come in a pack of three. I'm grabbing one of this to make a wall organizer. We are also going to need this faux leather sheet. I'm flipping it over and tracing slightly more than half of the trivet on it. Then we're going to cut along the outline so we end up with this semicircle and I am adjusting it in place making sure the edges match. Now I'm carefully lifting the sheet and I'm going to apply a thin line of hot glue along the edges and pressing it until the glue cools down. This way I'm going to attach the semicircle to the cork trivet. Now I'm taking a black cord from the dollar store and I'm going to attach it to the side of the trivet starting from the bottom. I'm applying a very little amount of hot glue for this. Once we reach the point where the semicircle ends, we are going to stop right there and measure how long we want the wall organizer to be. And then I'm going to start attaching the cord to the side of the trivet. Once this is done, I'm going to grab these pearl stickers and I'm planning to attach them along the edges of the faux leather semicircle. To paint them, I'm taking this metallic gold acrylic color and I will be applying two coats. I'm trying to mimic those upholstery nails with these stickers. If you have upholstery nails on hand, you can push them into the trivet instead. After they dry down, I'm attaching them along the edge of the faux leather semicircle while making sure they are equally spaced out. I'm using a tiny dab of hot glue to attach this. You can also attach them with super glue if you like. So this completes our wall pocket organizer. You can put your important mails in there or maybe cards and this would be such a cool item to hang above your desk. For the remaining two pieces, I'm going to paint the coasters with the sage green and a peachy pink acrylic paint. I thought of going for a cute summer themed fruit pattern art. After the paint dried down, I'm going to start with the sage green trivet and randomly drawing some red semicircles. I'm thinking to paint some watermelon slices. To make them look more realistic, I'm adding a tiny bit of white and blending it with the red. For the rind of the watermelon, I'm using a white paint. For the skin, I'm mixing green with a little amount of black and with my detailing brush, I'm drawing the arches. Then I'm painting the seeds with black acrylic paint. To give the seeds a bit more detailing, I'm putting a small dot of white paint on them. On the pink trivet, I'm sketching some strawberries with a pencil. First I'm drawing the outline and then filling it in with the color. I'm now painting the leaves green. For the seeds I'm using yellow. And then I will also be painting some white flower in between. For the finishing touches I'm outlining the strawberries with black and then painting the center of the flowers yellow. So this is how our cute summer themed coasters turned out. I think they're adorable and we completely changed the look of the plain trivets. For the next hack, we're going to be using one of these Finstan bath mats. They were on a sale just for 99 cents and we're going to use this to make a wall hanging. I'm laying it down against a flat surface and then taking my masking tape, I'm making the shape of a triangle on it. I'm also taking some measurement just to ensure there is equal space on both the sides. 
I have left around 4 to 5 inches of space on the top. Then I'm taking a black acrylic paint and with a flat sponge brush I'm going to dab the paint on the fabric. I'm also using a smaller paint brush to get into all the areas where the sponge brush couldn't reach. Then I'm removing all the tapes and letting it dry for a few hours before moving on to the next section. Now that the paint is nice and dry, I'm taking my masking tape and making another triangle right below the first one. Here I'm just doing my calculations to make this triangle smaller than the first one. I'm marking on the washi tape, this will help us to stick the masking tape where we want it to be. I'm also taping down an additional layer just to be on the safe side because we don't want the paint to transfer anywhere else. Now I'm taking this mustard color and in the same way I'm going to apply the paint with a sponge brush. Then we're going to remove the tape and let it dry for some time. Moving on to the last section, I'm again using this masking tape as a stencil and this triangle is going to be smaller than the one above. For the smallest triangle, I'm again using my black acrylic paint and applying a generous amount with the sponge brush. Then I'm removing the tape and while the paint is drying, I'm taking this yarn in mustard color which I grabbed from Michaels and this mini yarn in white. I cut out a 4 inch long cardboard piece which I will be using to make the tassels. So we are going to wrap the yarn around the cardboard piece for like 25 to 30 times. Next I'm taking the white yarn and slipping it underneath the loops and then I'm going to remove the yarn and tie a double knot on the top and cut the excess. Now I'm going to grab the strands together and wrap the yarn again sparing about an inch of space from the top. I'll wrap it tightly for 3-4 to four times and tie a double knot to secure it. Then we're going to cut the loops and trim the ends making sure they are even. In the same way, we are going to make 6 other tassels, so in total we have 7 tassels. Now I'm grabbing my needle and slipping one strand of white yarn through it. And then I'm going to poke it right into the corner of the bath mat and tying a double knot on the back to secure it in place. In the same way, I'm going to tie another tassel right at the center. We will continue tying the tassels and make sure they are equally spaced out. Now that our tassels are attached, I'm going to take this rectangular wood piece. This is a balsa wood so it's very lightweight. To stain the wood, I'm taking my trusty wood stain. This is in the shade Early American and I'm first going in with my sanding sponge to smooth it out. And then I'm applying the stain with a sponge brush. I'm now removing the excess stain with a towel. Once we're done with staining the wood, we are going to let it dry for 5-6 to six hours as per the instructions. Now I'm going to attach this wood piece to the bath mat and taking my measuring tape, I'm making sure there is equal space on both the sides. To attach it, I'm using a generous amount of E6000. Then I'm going to use these clamps to press them together and allow it to dry for 24 hours. To hang it up, I'm taking a piece of jute rope and attaching the ends to the wood with hot glue. I'm applying a lot of hot glue just to make sure it's nice and secure. I'm so impressed how pretty this is looking. This would be such a unique piece for your home and it was so easy to make and also extremely budget friendly. For the final hack, I stumbled upon these boxes from IKEA. They were on a discounted price for only $4.99 and they come in a pack of two, one large and one small. I'm starting off with unscrewing the knobs and we're going to put the screws aside for later use. 
For the smaller box, we are also going to need these pearl stickers. You can get them at Dollar Store or on Amazon. First, we are going to individually remove the pearls from the plastic. Then I'm going to attach them with this Gorilla Super Glue along the inner border following the shape. I'm trying to keep an equal space between two pearls and we want to press it down for a few seconds until the glue sets a bit. We want to apply only a tiny dot of super glue to avoid any mess. Once we're done attaching the embellishments, we're going to let it dry. Next, I'm grabbing this Rust-Oleum Paint Plus Primer in white and I will be spray painting both the pieces. I went for two coats. I taped along the border to get a crisp line and to prevent the paint from transferring anywhere we don't want. To paint the smaller box, I'm going to use this sage green acrylic paint. Guys, I looked everywhere for a sage green spray paint. I couldn't find it anywhere, so I'm just improvising a bit and with the white paint as a base, I am applying the green paint over it. You can definitely use any spray paint color of your choice. So I'm going to apply three coats of paint and we are going to make sure the paint dries between the coats. Next, I'm taking this decorative knob that I got on Amazon and I'm going to use the same screw which I removed previously to screw it in. It was a perfect match and I'll make sure I leave the link down below for you guys. Next, I'm covering the outer border with washi tape. We will be using a stencil so we don't want the paint to transfer anywhere. I'm taking very small pieces of tape for the curved edges. Now that everything is taped down, we are going to take the stencil and tape it down to hold it in place. We are going to mix this white chalk paint with beige. First, I tried to apply this with a sponge brush but it was a bad idea. The paint texture went bumpy and the stencil was moving a lot. So I used a flat brush and it worked so much better. Now I'm carefully removing the tapes to reveal this beautiful pattern. After letting it dry, I'm taking the same stencil, I washed it with some soapy water and I am trying to match the pattern. Then I'm taping it down and applying the same paint with the flat brush. And again I'm removing the stencil very slowly. Now as you can see there is some paint bleed which we are going to fix with a precision brush dipped in white paint. We reach the most satisfying part which is peeling off the tape. I love how crisp the lines are looking. Now to protect the paint we are going to take this polyurethane satin varnish and apply a thin layer on both the boxes. This will help to seal the paint. And this is how these boxes turned out. I'm totally obsessed with them. I think this is such an easy way to spruce them up and add some personalization. today i really hope you liked the diys and if you did please give it a thumbs up and comment down below which ikea hack was your favorite if you make any of these diys i would love to see them tag me on instagram at dustyhues and i love you guys so much i'll be seeing you guys next time